So now we're again going to see one of those examples of where all of the code is exactly the same, but if you change between unsigned to signed integer, it'll have different code generated. That's the power of sign. And it turns out that the power of sign is a curious thing. Make one man weep, make another man sing. And that's a call forward to the future integer overflow vulnerabilities. Later on, if you take the vulnerability classes, you will become intimately familiar with how the power of sign and integer overflows causes developers to weep and exploit writers to sing. So the previous shift example to unsigned.c makes way for shift example three signed.c. So we just change this over to an int instead of an unsigned int. And that creates some new assembly instructions here, CDQ and SAR. Now, practically speaking, here's the assembly before, here's the assembly after, we actually see the exact same shift left here. So we'll talk about that in a second. But there's this other bit where the shift right turns into a CDQ and an AND and an ADD and a shift arithmetic right instead of a shift logical right. So for now, I'm going to tell you that this CDQ, it stands for convert D word to quad word. It has to do with sign extension. And really all of this extra code is just about making the math work out correctly for various corner cases. But personally, I tend to not see CDQ in the wild. And I tend to think this is pretty much just a visual studioism. So I personally don't feel that you need to know or memorize what CDQ is but we can have it as an exercise for the reader later on after we learn to read the fun manual that you can come back and learn about CDQ. For now, I wanna focus on the shift instructions. So now we have a shift arithmetic right instead of a shift logical right. So this can be also generated by the greater than, greater than, the bit shift operation if the operands are assigned in the C code. Same form as before, source slash destination of an RMX and CL or one byte immediate in order to say how many places to shift. It's a shift right, so it's again dividing by two and it's more efficient than a multiply. And that's why a compiler might use it. But what differentiates a shift arithmetic right from a shift logical right is that previously, when you shifted to the right, the most significant bits would get filled in with zeros, always and unconditionally. Now, with a shift arithmetic right, the most significant bits are going to be filled in with whatever the sign bit is. So intuitively, you can think of this like, okay, well, we're dealing with signed values, so let's say that we had the value signed negative four, for instance. If you shifted negative four one bit to the right, you would want it to be divided by two and turn into negative two. But if you stick zeros in the most significant bits, it's going to change from a negative value to a positive value. So shift arithmetic right is going to keep the positive or negativeness of the thing that you're shifting. So here's an example. So we had B3. And when you shift it over by two bits, the one in the most significant bit before we started this will get inserted here and here. So this is the one. That's the zero. That's the one. That's the one. And it fills in two ones up here. If instead it was a positive value of 33, then it's going to fill in the zero from up here, zero, zero, two bits of zero. So a shift arithmetic is not equal to a shift logical when you're dealing with something that has the most significant bit equal to one, something that could be interpreted as negative, and this would fill in ones, that would fill in zeros. If the value happens to be interpretable as positive, then they essentially lead to the same result. Then there's shift arithmetic left, and it actually behaves exactly the same as shift logical left. And that's why we saw a shift logical left in the assembly code. Because basically, if you again have something like a negative two and you want to turn it into a negative four by moving it two bits to the left, sorry, by moving it one bit to the left, then you can go ahead and fill in a zero at the least significant bit and it's still going to be negative four at the end. So as before, both with the shift arithmetic right and the shift arithmetic left, the bits that get shifted off the last bit to essentially get shifted off goes into the carry flag in the R flags register. So I told you, you don't really need to care what CDQ does, but if you want to kind of see what's happening and infer what's going on, then go ahead and step through the assembly and change out the values that you have for argv of one. Remember, we passed the command line arguments in the project properties, try different values that are on different boundaries. So we're dealing with a signed integer here. So 
maybe something which is the maximum signed integer, maybe something that's half the signed integer. Signed integer is going to get multiplied by 8, so maybe something that when multiplied by 8 equals the maximum value. Play around with some different values and see what happens in the assembly.